What do you mean by a transmission gate logic? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju. Welcome to the Backwards Engineering community. Where I make it very easy for you. So, let us ask the obvious question. What is a transmission gate logic? Well, let's find out. So, transmission gate logic. Just like the name suggests, this is basically a logic that we implement. And this is a CMOS logic. So, in the case of a CMOS circuit, we know that we have two components. A PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor. So here, in order to implement a transmission gate logic, first we would take a PMOS transistor like this. And then we would take an NMOS transistor like this. And we connect it in parallel like this. And here, here we give a particular input A and here we obtain a particular output, say B. And now here at the gate of both this PMOS as well as NMOS transistor, we give control signals. But here, if we give a signal C here, we give a signal C complement over here. These are the control signals that we give. So here it is based on this particular control signal, this transmission gate works. So therefore here this acts as a bilateral switch that is controlled by an externally applied signal. So they act as voltage controlled switches. That is why we use the transmission gate logic. That is in order to implement something as a voltage controlled switch. So here a transmission gate logic can be used for the purpose of switching both analog as well as digital signals and they can pass the entire range of voltage that is between 0 to VDD the entire voltage can be passed from A to B that is whatever input we are giving at A we will get the exact output at B without any loss. That was one of the major drawbacks that we saw for the case of a pass transistor logic. That is, in the case of a pass transistor logic, we just used one NMOS transistor. But here, while using both an NMOS as well as a PMOS transistor, we can now pass whatever input we give at the A to the output over here at P. But now, how does this work? How does this work? So here, there are two inputs that we are giving. First input is this particular input, that is the input at A. And next is the control signal that we are giving, that is C. And now when we give these two inputs, we would get an output B. So here since there are two inputs, let us take say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 as these combinations. So here when the inputs are 0, 0, first we have to check the control element, what we get here. So here, the first control signal is 0. So now, when we get a control signal as 0, now we know that when it is 0, here this is 0 and this is 1. C complement becomes 1. So here, when this is 0, this particular transistor is off. And now here, when this is 1, this particular transistor is off. Therefore, this particular circuit now goes into a high impedance state. That is, whatever we give as the input, we will not get anything at the output. It has very high impedance, a very high resistive property right now. Similarly, at this particular condition as well, here because the value of this C is 0, here this is 0 and this is 1. So therefore, both these transistors are off and therefore, this also goes into a high impedance state. And now here when the control input is 1, then when this is 1, this transistor is on. And now when this is 1, the C complement becomes 0. And when there is 0 as an input to a PMOS transistor, this transistor is also on. But now this is the interesting part. Here in the cases when the control signal is 1, that means that this now passes because both these transistors are on. And now when the input is 0, then this input now passes through the NMOS transistor like this. 0 passes through the NMOS transistor, we get an output 0 here. And now when the input is 1, it passes through the 
PMOS transistor like this and we get an output 1 over here. This is the basic working of a transmission gate. This is because in the case of a PMOS transistor, the gate to source voltage must be significantly lesser than the threshold voltage so as to be completely turned off. So therefore, it can only pass a very weak logic 0, but it can pass a very strong logic 1. That is why when we give 1 as the input, it passes through the PMOS transistor. But when the input is a logic 0, it passes through the NMOS transistor and we get it at the output over here. This is a simple working of a CMOS transmission gate. I'll write it down. So I've written it down. CMOS transmission gates, they act as a voltage control switch. They can be used for switching both analog as well as digital signals passing the full range of voltages that is from 0 to VDD unlike what is seen in single MOS devices like a pass transistor. So here, here in this particular case, in the case of a PMOS transistor, the gate to source voltage must be significantly lower than the threshold voltage VTP to turn it fully off or else the current will still flow. Thus, the logic 1 will always pass through the PMOS and the logic 0 will pass through the NMOS. Here, a transmission gate is represented by a symbol like this. This is the symbol of a transmission gate. This thus is simply how you implement a transmission gate logic using a CMOS circuit. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So, I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what I referred to as a transmission gate logic. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.